Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 121. 121. Day, day three thousand, day, day three thousand one hundred and twenty-one. Three is to signify the fact that we're in the third, that we are in the third edition, third edition, day one twenty-one. Today we'll solve the problem that you will find on page number three hundred and seventeen. Make sure that the book is in front of you. Turn to page number three hundred and seventeen. Read the problem to yourself. Don't just because there is a lot of abbreviations I make here, so that. Make sure that you have the book in front of you. Example 4.6.1. In 4.6.1, we are given a chart here dealing with com dealing with consumer complaints about some some uh, some air airline. And here's the chart. I'm going to quickly go over it. FP stands for for flight flight problems. Make sure the book is in front of you. As I said already twice. Flight problems, baggage, customer service, reservation, credit, special passenger accommodation, special the special passenger accommodation such as handicapped people other other other, other complaints about other things and that's it the total complaints that were that were received in 2003 were 23000 total complaints that were received by this airline in 2004 was about 13000 let's answer the first question the first question is asking us there are three parts to it let's answer part a it says approximately let me change the color, I don't want to write with red. Approximate number of complaints. Approximate number of complaints about credit in 2003. A promic approximate number of complaints. They're looking for absolute number. Absolute number that is complaints. Number of complaints. Number of complaints that were made about the credit in year 2003. If you look at if you look at year 2003 here, right here we have year 2003, and the credit category is right here, and it tells us that one percent, one percent of all the complaints that were received, one percent, one percent of all the complaints that were received in 2003 dealt with that category of a credit so we just have to figure out 1% of 23,000 it's just it's just 1% 1% of 23,000 which is simply 1 over 100 times 23,000 and that's all it is and of course 1% simply means that we're going to drop the two zeros and that's what we're done the answer is 230 complaints, approximately 230, because in the book the figure that they give you is not exactly 23,000, it's 22,998. Don't waste your time dealing with this this kind of uh, mumbo jumbo, okay? In the real exam, don't waste your time trying to do deal with 22,998. 23,000 is good enough. Even this one, even though it says 13,300, 13,000 is good enough. Because it's a multiple choice exam, unless they're looking for the, unless it's an open-ended question where they're looking for the exact answer, you shouldn't have to waste your time. Let's do part B. Part B says, part B says that uh, total complaints, total complaints decrease by approximately what percentage? Oh, that's it. Total complaints. They took it not not complaints about one particular category, but the total complaints decreased by approximately what percentage? Here is the total complaints. And what happened to total complaints? Total complaints went down. Total number of complaints went down by about ten thousand. They had total of twenty three thousand complaints in two thousand and three. In two thousand and four, they only had thirteen thousand complaints. 
that's a decrease of 10. That's a decrease of 10. Let's do it on the top. Let's do it on the top. So the total complaints, total complaints decreased by 10,000, by 10,000. So we simply have to figure out 10 is what percent of 23, because 23 was the starting point. Let's do it, shall we? So let's do it together. 10 is means equal, what means unknown, yeah, x percent means over 100, of means times 23. That's the equation we have to solve for. Let's multiply both sides by 100, so we end up with 23 times x. 23 times x would equal 10 times 100, which is 1000, which means x equals 1000 divided by 23, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to divide 1000 by 23. We're not, again, we're not looking for the exact answer. We'll do the best we can. Do you understand? Let's do it together. Let's do it together. 1,000 divided by 23. You can clearly see it will go 4 times because for 25 times 4 is 100. So it will go 4 times. And 4 times 23, which should be 8 less than 100. Because 25 times 4, 25 times 4 is 100. So 25 is 23 is 2 less. So it's going to be... 92, obviously. 2, carry 1. We, sh we, don't, we shouldn't have to do this thing. 92. And then we're left with 8. We are left with 8. And how many 23s to... Obviously, we can go 4 times. Obviously, we can go 4 times. We cannot go 4 times. Let's go 3 times. 3 times with simply 23 less than this thing. Let's just do it here. 3 times. 9, 69, there you go. Because we bring the 0 down, it becomes 80, it's 69, and then we still have 11 left over. So technically speaking, technically speaking, it is 43, it is, it is 43 and 11 23rd, approximately. So just, just say 43%. Let's just say 43%. Now in the book, in the book, if you read the book carefully, they came up with 42%. They came up with 42% because they are hell-bent on using 13,300. They don't want to use 13,000. So if you use 13,300, listen very carefully. The difference here is exactly 10,000. But if, 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 it is, if we go from 23 to 13, from 23 to 13, it's exactly 10,000. But if you insist on using 13,300, then the difference, instead of being 10,000, instead of being 10,000, it will only be 9,700. In which case, we have to figure out 9,700 is what percentage of 23,000. We can do that too if you wanted to, but it's not necessary. 43% is good enough. But if you were to use, the, and we, need, we need the room. We need the room. Let's do it here. If we were to use 9,700, 9, then the question is 9,700 is what percent of 23,000 is what percent of 23,000 in which case it will simply be 9,700 is means equal what means unknown percent means 100 times 23k again multiply both sides by 100 and you'll see that you will see that uh, 23k or rather 23 23x 23,000 times x would equal 9,700 times 100. All of this is not necessary. This is absolutely unnecessary. It's a, way, it's a sheer waste of time. This is, this is good enough. This is fairly good enough. But since we, since we dug a hole, let's get ourselves out of the hole. So here is this. I'm going to speed up a little bit. You see the four zeros here? There are four zeros. Two zeros with two, 9,700 and another one, 100 that came from here when we cross multiplied it. And here we have three zeros. One, two, three. Let's knock out these three zeros with one, two, and three. And now we have to divide 9,070 by 23, instead of 1,000, we're going to divide by 9,070 by 23, obviously, because we are taking 30, uh, uh, but the one zero gets cancelled out, which is, which is why it comes up at 30, but we took 300 instead of 13,300 as, as opposed to just 13,000. We can do that too. 9,070 is not going to make a hell of a difference. It's not going to make a hell of a difference. 900, 900, so now we have 970, 
you see 970 divided by 23. Again, times 4 will give us 92, right? And that gives us 5, and then times 2 is 46. So now, in this case, in this case, the way we are doing the answer, remaining 4, in that case, instead of answer being 43 and 11, 20, 11 23rd, we'll end up, in this case, we'll end up with 42 and 4 23rd, or approximately 42%. And that's how they came up with 42% in the book. But making the fuss about it was not necessary. This is not something we'll do in the real exam. We're just doing it here. There are a lot of things we do here extra, which is why one problem sometimes takes 15 minutes, because we are here for learning purposes. We are here to learn to improve our math skills. Do you understand? This is not precisely how we behave in the real exam. Let's do part C. In part C, we are given we are given three statements and the question is based on the information that is provided to us in the table which of these three statements that is that are given to us are accurate let's do it together which of the so i'm going to read this from the book verbatim it says based on the information that is provided to us in the table and i'm not reading it verbatim which of the following statements are true. Which of the following three statements are true? And the statement one says, that half of all the complaints half, more than half, more, more than half of all the complaints came from these three categories. What does FP stand for? Flight problem, passengers who had trouble with the, the, with the flight, flight problem, the passenger who filed complaints about baggage, maybe their baggage was lost, and the passenger who complained about customer service. They were not too happy about how they were treated at the counter. It says more than half of all the complaints came from these three categories, these three categories, categories in both 2003 and 2004. In both of these years, more than 50% of your complaint came from these three categories. And our job is to simply say yes or no. So let's find out, shall we? It's very simple. So here's the, here's the flight problem, here's the baggage, here's the customer service. This first to, to 2003, there's 20%. We didn't have to rewrite everything, we could, have, we could have seen it from here. We don't have to rewrite everything. We can see very quite easily that 8 plus 3 is more than 10. 8 plus 3 is more than 10. So that's 10, it's actually 11, it's 11. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. You see? That's 20%, that's 18%. And that's 13%. It's going to be 51%. So half half of so far what we have done is true. It is true for 2003. It is true for 2003 that more than half the complaints were regarding these three categories. Let's see if it's also true about because it says and 2004. Let's see if it's also true about 2004. And again, we can clearly see 20%, 20%, 11%. Of course, it's more than. We don't have to do anything. Uh, it's just silly. It's 22 plus 22. It's just silly. 22. And of course it's going to be more than 50%. So the first statement, the first statement is correct. The first statement is correct. It is true that more than half of all the complaints that were filed came from these three categories for these two years. Let's look at statement two. Statement two. Statement two says, special passenger accommodations right here. Let's erase this thing so we know now that we are done with that thing. So in statement two, in statement two we are dealing with this guy. Special, special passenger, special passenger accommodation. Special passenger accommodation is just a euphemistic way of saying maybe somebody was invalid, somebody who was handicapped and they require some particular special accommodation. Do you understand? It's simply
euphemistic way of saying how they dealt with handicapped passengers. We'll talk about this word in a second. It comes from euphemism. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's just first finish it. The special passenger accommodation complaint complaints remained unchanged from 2003 to 2004 and the answer to that statement answer to that statement is a big fat no it's a big fat no I don't know why no has to be big fat because usually it's a big fat zero it's a resounding no because they want us to think that the special passenger accommodation it was 0.9% in 2003 it was 0.9% in 2004 but the percentage is the same percentage is the same it was approximately 1% of all the complaints in 2003 it was approximately 1% of all the complaints in 2004 one out of every 100 complaint was about special passenger accommodation in both of these years but that does not mean that the absolute number of complaints were the same he's talking about special passenger accommodation complaints they're talking about absolute number absolute number the percentages were same percentages were same yes but but not but not the absolute numbers obviously because in 2003 we're not going to do everything out it will be damn silly it will be bloody bloody silly thing to do actually because it's not necessary in 2003 it is 1% of 1% of 23,000 it was 1% of 23,000 in 2004 it is 1% of 13,000 we don't actually have to do the work to realize that these two numbers are not equal 1% of 23,000 and 1% of 13,000 they're not the same numbers the number of complaints regarding special passenger accommodations in the two years were not the same the percentage was the same because there are total, two different totals total complaints in 2003 was 23,000 total complaints in 2004 was 13,000 so statement 2 statement 2 we just established that is false the statement 2 was false statement 1 we found to be correct statement 1 uh, statement 2 did not work out let's look at statement 3 Statement 3 says, from 2003 to 2004, this is statement number 3, from 2003 to 2004, number of, I keep forgetting what FP stands for, flight problems, number of flight problem complaints, increased by 2% don't worry about the fact that in the middle of the sentence I put it in a capital letter I, it has no significance you understand I'll just not paying attention so, <coughs> <coughs> so is it true that the number of complaints regarding flight problems increased by 2% again they want us to think that it did we're not dealing with this one now. We're dealing with this category. In this category. And it is true that it went from 20% to 22%. But that does not mean that the number of complaints increased by 2%. Because to answer this question, we actually have to figure it out. And you'll find that it is not the case. It is not the case because it is here it is 20% of a huge number 20% of 23,000 and 22% even though it went up by 2% but the base is much lower 
22% of 13,000, 22% of 13,000 cannot possibly be more than 20% of 23,000. Again, we don't have to do anything in the real exam. You just have to be able to see it, that it's not true. But we're going to do it out just, just to get some practice. So here's 2000, 2003, here's 2004. Here we have 20%, right here, 20% of 23,000. Of 23,000. 20%. Twenty percent of twenty-three thousand. We know ten percent. We know ten percent of twenty-three thousand would simply be two thousand three hundred. You just drop a zero. Therefore, twenty percent is going to be twice as much. It's going to be four thousand six hundred. It's going to be four thousand six hundred. Let's look at twenty. Let's look at two thousand four. In two thousand four. It is 22% of 13,000. 22% of 13,000. We're just doing it just for the hell of it. Do you understand? Let's do it together. So 10% of 13,000. I left, I left no room here. Let's do it on the top. Let's do this work on the top. 10% of 13,000. 10% of 13,000 is just 1,000, 1,300. Therefore 20%, 20% 20 is going to be twice as much. So 20% is just going to be twice as much, which is 2,600. It's 22%. And we know that 1%, 1% of 13,000, 1% of 13,000, you knock out two zeros, is 130. On the 1%, it's going to be another 130. There we go. Now we have the 22%. Now we have 22%. It is not going to be anywhere close to 4,000. It's just a waste of time. So approximately, approximately 3,000 complaints were lodged in 2004 regarding passenger problem and 2003. 4,600 complaints were lost. So it turns out that the number of complaints did not go up. Actually, it went down. It went down drastically from 4,600 to 3,000 because all the complaints went down. They were doing quite well. The total complaints went down by almost $10,000. They did a bloody good job dealing with the issue. Somebody did a bloody good job. Either somebody is very good at massaging, massaging the figure, cooking the numbers, or they are indeed doing very well. I believe that was the end of it. That was the end of it. Tomorrow we'll do the next problem that you see there. On the next page, page 318, dealing with the pie chart. Okay? Bye now.